Now, Bonsai Empire have asked me to answer the following question. What are the differences in development between deciduous bonsai and coniferous bonsai? Hello, welcome to my garden. My name is Harry Harrington and I'm filming from the UK on what is quite a cold but sunny Sunday morning. Now Bonsai Empire have asked me to answer the following question. What are the differences in development between deciduous bonsai and coniferous bonsai? Now what I teach my students um, here in my garden is that you have bonsai um, as a whole and the general care principles and development for all bonsai and then I break it down into two different halves you have deciduous and coniferous species as they are quite different in terms of um, their care and their design and today in this video a short video I'm going to be showing you some of the differences between coniferous and deciduous bonsai development just using a, a, a few examples in my garden so we're now in my uh, work area and this is uh, a European beech that I acquired as basically a, a trunk around 20 years ago and we've been, uh, I've been able to develop it and get some really good ramification in around 20 years. Now in the UK we have a relative to the rest of the world we have quite humid cool uh, summer not as many light hours or as much sunlight and for us deciduous trees are far more vigorous, grow far better than pines or uh, juniper, the most coniferous species. So I will tend to develop deciduous species such as this far more than pines and conifers. One of the big, big differences when uh, developing trees like these is in terms of maintenance and repotting. Now with deciduous trees I can Bare root, the, uh, bare root the entire tree at repotting, remove all the soil, um, adjust the, the, the surface roots and really push the tree onwards. Whereas with pines and junipers, most coniferous species, there's a, a symbiotic relationship with the soil and you have to be very hesitant and careful with the, the work that you carry out on them. You also have to bear in mind that there are direct relationships between the branches of a coniferous species, or so for instance a pine, uh, all the way down to uh, a heavy root in the, the root system. You remove the branch and then the root that supports that branch will die and it will die along a line and create a, a natural shari. Whereas with deciduous trees we can basically remove whatever branches we want to, even if we remove all of the branches and start again. With pines, you have to have a, a much different approach to development. On deciduous trees, uh, when you have a, a refined tree such as this, there's a lot of work involved in maintaining your the image that you create over time. Um, at midsummer, most or all of the leaves will be stripped off and I'll be pruning and detail wiring and adjusting the tertiary branches across the crown and the lower branches. And then when it comes to autumn and the leaves naturally fall, as we reach that point already, um, I will have to do the entire job again, dewiring, rewiring, and all of the new growth is continually dewired and rewired to maintain a, a fantastic image. There are some species such as elm that you can resort to clip and grow, but if you really want a, a tree that sparkles uh, such as this, you need to be putting a lot of wiring in and obviously a lot of pruning through the growing season um, just to maintain shape and we will have five or six or even seven flushes of growth. In the UK most of um, the coniferous species are much slower growing. We consider all pines to be single flush pines. That means that we will be candle trimming in the uh, spring as the candles extend and then around late summer in, in August then we will have needle plucking and pruning and possibly wiring but life with the pines is a lot easier a lot easier but that means they don't develop as fast either so this is another tree I'd, I'd like to show you it's a, a Chinese jun juniper um, a shimpaku juniper and this is a good example to show you um, when I'm generalizing about styling coniferous species and deciduous species 
Now with the bench that I've uh, just shown you, you'll have noticed that the, the branches tend to sweep upwards and they continue to sweep up into a, a natural crown. And this is how a deciduous tree should be styled. Um, whereas coniferous species, we will tend to have down sweeping branches imitating an ancient pine or juniper which has carried snow and been weighted down with the, with the weight of snow and its own foliage over decades and decades. So in terms of design, there's quite a, a contrast between the two. Down sweeping branches for coniferous species, up growing um, branches for deciduous trees. And where you see deciduous trees that have down sweeping branches, it tends to look a little wrong because people are, are styling the tree as though it is coniferous. And there is an important difference when you come to styling. So here, here we have a, another example tree. Um, this is uh, Euonymus um, europaeus, or the field spindle, European field spindle. Now this is a tree that I got as a, a little stump. And it's a good example of how you can develop deciduous trees for yourself. There is actually the original stump. It still hasn't healed over after 10 years. Um, what was the new growth, was it, and, and simply a little shoot like this, has significantly thickened up. And each time I've allowed the, the tree to, to grow to two, three, four meters in height over a season, then chopped it back. So there's another chop point there, which hopefully will uh, heal over one day. And then the final length before I started chopping back the entire trunk again um, and growing out the branches. Now the way I prefer to develop my branches is to find as, as much ramification as possible and then allow them to, to thicken up. And this involves a lot of chopping back in autumn. So in the spring I can get lots and lots of back budding and a lot of wiring just to ensure that there's movement in all the branches. And this is quite important to do before the branches thicken up, otherwise they become very, very straight and they don't look very natural. So the, the process of developing your own deciduous tree um, is, is simply growing your own trunk, developing it, or trunk building. Um, you can develop a, a good nabari at the same time, this was grown on top of a tile, just to make sure that all the roots were, were very, very flat and growing laterally. And then you can develop the branches. You can literally chop everything off and you know that you will get buds coming back from the trunk and you can start your branches. Now, if I show you this other example with coniferous species, this here. Now this is a, a Scots pine, which is a fantastic example of European pines. Scots pine will grow all the way up to the Arctic Circle, and I've, I've heard anecdotally that they can even be found in Jamaica. Uh, so they're a very robust pine. Now, if you remove all the foliage from a branch, that branch will die. And if you removed all your foliage, or you, you trunk chopped in the same way as I would a deciduous tree, you will just kill the tree itself. So the, the best form left for developing a, a thick trunk and developing your own field material with coniferous species is to allow massive extension of some of the branches and you can see where these have been chopped back after collection from the fields but the whole time you keep these lower branches that may have been in existence for 10-15 years you keep them healthy you keep them live and keep pruning them back and you can literally build up your coniferous tree um, your pine or your juniper while at the same time thickening up and that's that's the it has to be your approach when it comes to field growing coniferous species so in terms of the actual development times of deciduous and coniferous species there isn't that actually much difference we are um particularly when we first get into bonsai and we will watch a, a demonstration and see before and after images of uh, a pine that um, is, is turned from this whirlwind of, of branches and then it, a, a final design or what looks like a final design is set into the tree immediately over the course of maybe a five or six hour demo. Uh, now the work is spectacular, but what you're, 
you're, you're missing out is the, the years of preparation beforehand. A good demo tree um, will need two, three, four years of, of prep work, of building up the, the density and ramification of the, the foliage and things like that. Deciduous trees, um, they grow a lot faster. Uh, you can work them a lot harder, but because they get naked in the, the winter, you can see their branches, there are no shortcuts. You need that branch taper. You need to make sure that you have um, plenty of ramification and that there aren't any shortcuts to finishing a deciduous tree. So I think if you were to start with two saplings, one pine and one an elm, and 10 years later, uh, you look to the results, they would be on par with each other. There's, there's no quick fixes with either. I hope you've enjoyed my answers to the Bonsai Empire question and I will see you soon.